Hi there, Phil Simbari for the USBGF. About three or four years ago, when the latest version of uh, Extreme Gammon was completed, uh, Xavier, who is the developer of Extreme Gammon, had myself, Neil Kazaros, and Mochi, uh, and I believe also Christopher Yep, uh, as beta testers. So we had the program for several months before, and we found some bugs in it. We made recommendations to improve the features uh, and the display and so on and gave him our feedback. But one of the things that I remember vividly is Mel Kazaros telling Xavier uh, and congratulating Xavier that he'd finally uh, developed a program that understands and knows how to play back games uh, as well or even maybe better than human beings. Before that time, according to Neil, you could not trust any uh, computer program when it came to a back game. Uh, it gave you the wrong information, it gave you the wrong play, even when it rolled it out and changed its play, it wasn't necessarily right because it didn't really understand how to play back games properly, so the rollouts weren't even good. But the latest version, the one that you all have now, if you've upgraded your version of Extreme Gammon and have the latest upgrades, and uh, it's real easy to do, by the way, go to help, uh, check for update when you're online, hit yes and you'll see that I've got the latest update there's no important updates available make sure you do that from time to time you should usually be notified if you don't have the latest version but the latest version should say 2.12-20 oh I've got a pre-release I'm sorry so uh, this is a pre-release version uh, but you should that will that will be sure you have the latest but the point here is that it knows how to play back games and it knows how to defend back games better than any uh, human being, uh, probably better than any human being. It's quite possible that Neil still can outplay it and a few others. Uh, but it, it's given us a lot of insight. And those of us who really study the game, like myself, I study and teach uh, most of the day every day, uh, and in trying to improve, we're copying what XG does. Uh, so you have a position like this. It no longer surprises me what the right play is. It used to. It used to be a shock. But let's see how Extreme Gammon would play a 5-1 here. And it's without question, uh, it would be a huge blunder to do anything but hit off the two point. And many players would never dream of making a play like this years ago. This is called the banana split play where you leave a double shot. Here's what it looks like after you make the play. And to try to understand why it's doing this, this is why, one of the many reasons why uh, the player defending a back game is winning a lot more now than they used to because we understand how and why to make plays like this. The whole goal when you're defending a back game is to make sure your opponent doesn't have a well-timed back game. In this case, we wanted to also make sure, and let's go back to the original, that he didn't roll a one and make the two point, have a one two back game or a one two four back game. Then he gets lucky and rolls a six here uh, from here and you think, wow, he got lucky and he was able to time this game and before you know it, red's leaving a double shot, getting hit, blue has a good board and wins the game. This is to prevent that. This is to retime and recirculate these checkers and cause blue's checkers on this side of the board to go crashing down around his ankles, down to the one and the two point so that even if he does end up with a 1-2 game or a 2-3 game, which is usually a very, very strong back game if it's well-timed, uh, we make sure it's not well-timed. So the other thing that I like to show people when they go, wow, how can this be right? How does this work? I recommend that you play it out, and you'll see why it works, but make sure you play it out right. Well, there's a trick to playing it out right. We can just see how Extreme Gammon plays this out. We can see how the best player in the world continues to play this out after this play and playing from both sides. It's very simple. Go to Setup, Play from Position, and make both players Extreme Gammon. By the way, you can select any level of play for Extreme Gammon. I don't select the top ones because it actually does some rolling out there and uh, it takes a while. And this uh, level, Extreme Gammon, still plays better than anybody in the world. Uh, John O'Hagan, who plays as good as anybody in the world, one of the best players in the world, plays Extreme Gammon, a 13-point match every single day, 
and has a losing record against it. I believe Extreme Gammon wins about 53% of the time against John, and John is playing at an extremely high level, um, around uh, PR of under four, clearly under four. How much is nobody's business unless John wants to tell, but he plays under four consistently, and uh, sometimes he'll play even at uh, under two and under one. You know, he plays incredibly well, and you still don't beat Extreme Gammon. So we're playing against the top level. So let's see what happens when the two play against each other. By the way, what I did before I got to this point is I went to, let me cancel this, I go to Options, Board Configuration, Animations, and I set the computer speed at a very slow speed. The higher numbers, for some reason, are slower. So I set all of the speed so that it goes a little slower so I can see what's going on and give it some time to think about it. And I hit Apply. Anytime you change anything here, if you don't hit Apply, it won't stick. Pardon the pun. Anyway, setup. Play from position, player one against player two. Now keep in mind, even with the right play, uh, Blue's going to win this game 28% of the time. So if this is played out properly by both players, Blue is still going to win this game sometimes. You're just going to win more by making the right play, and you win a lot more gammons by making the right play. But let's again see what happens when the two best players in the world play from here. Comes in and hits. Blue rolls a very bad roll. That's one of his worst rolls. He would love to have rolled a six and get out of there. But I, along the way, we're going to see lots of plays. But notice how he came out with a six and he didn't cover. He wants to get hit. That There's a lesson in watching. He now has his one-two game. Notice how red didn't hit there. He didn't want to help Blue's timing. Will he cover the three-point? I don't think so. I wouldn't. He doesn't want the three-point made. He'd rather recirculate the checker. Ah, I'm right. So you try to predict what it's going to do and see how you do. If he comes in, he's going to try not to hit. Here, look, he could have hit there with the three, and he didn't. So my predictions so far are right. This is helping me learn. And wherever my predictions are wrong, and believe me, they often are, I can stop and watch, go back and examine the play and see where any point in time I do something that's not what XG would do. Yeah, I would have made the prime there. That way now blue has to crash. Look how blue didn't hit. It's counterintuitive when you're playing back games when you hit or don't hit. It's the often the opposite of what you would do in a normal game. This is not, well, there's the crashing roll. By the way, you don't you don't know exactly why a play is right watching it one time, but you get some insights into how it plays out. Blue actually ended up with a much better game than I thought he would. He still has a good chance to win this game. He still has, he's only thrown one checker away. That's pretty good from this position. That surprised me. I might have come out there. See, I might have played number 13 wrong. I'm going to go back and look at 13 later and see... Uh, why I was wrong about coming out there. I would have thought I'd preserve my board a little bit more rather than making the point, but I guess you get clobbered too much. So while it's playing out, well, let's, let's keep watching. It's still very interesting. We can see how Blue could win this game now. And if, if you did this five or six times, you would see why it was right to make the original banana split play. But the other thing you can do is you can make the other play, the non-hit play, and play it out from there, and you'll see why it's, it was right. You'll see that there is a timing problem here. He hit there. How many people would have hit there with the one? Oh, he, he had a hit in order to not bring it in. Otherwise, he was leaving a shot anyway. So I can, I can see that. I, I missed that. I would not have volunteered if I didn't have to. There weren't too many plays that surprised me, but I would go back and look through it one by one and see what other plays. This game is pretty much over now. It's just a matter of a race and 
Blue just got off the gammon. Wow, Blue might even win now. Look at this. Pretty close. Only three pip difference. So now it's just the luck of the dice is going to determine who wins. The skill is gone. Although there is some skill in these bear offs, believe it or not, and whether where you play your checkers and whether you fill holes and where you move from. But most of it's fairly obvious when there's no contact. Even I get most of these right. So the result doesn't prove anything. It, it just gives you one example of how and why it plays out the way it does. Well, look at that. Blue got its... Oh, and then just what I thought blue won. That's back in. Well, it's continuing to play a money game session, and I don't want it to continue, but I want to go back and look at move... Uh, this move... Was it 24 that surprised me? My memory's not that good. Double. Drop. Okay. Control B. Not properly formatted. I'm going to stop the program. At any rate, that is uh, my fun way of dealing with Extreme Gammon and watching its plays and learning from Extreme Gammon. Uh, the other option is to, instead of playing Extreme Gammon against Extreme Gammon, take one side and play it yourself. But while you're playing... Uh, make sure you play white perfectly and then the way to do that is to decide what you play and then play in the free mode F F R E E by hitting the F4 button and then hitting the hit button before you make every play to make sure you're making the right play so you can play one side against extreme gammon as well I uh, hope this was fun and informative for you if you don't have extreme gammon I hope this talked you into buying it www.extremegammon.com keep in mind that if you're a uh, uh, a member of, of uh, USBGF, you get a 20% discount, and there's a drop-down screen that says, where did you hear about Extreme Gaming uh, from a friend from the internet or from Phil Simborg? Uh, you know what I want you to choose. Thanks for watching. Bye.